Hi, so I, um, I recently sorted out how to hook a um, Plonk project into Cursive, and I wanted to give a demo showing how to actually do that end-to-end. Uh, -end. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to just uh, create a new project, um, basically a new Leiningen uh, closure script-based project. So um, uh, let me call it uh, maybe test Plonk. And um, what I'm going to do is go into that project, um, and in the project CLJ file, I'm going to um, basically, even though this is really a Plonk project and it's not using um, basically closure script and things like that uh, from line again, I'm going to do this so that it works uh, properly from cursive. Um, I change this to eight, um, and make it um, use closure script itself so that cursive has those symbols Org. okay and um, I have a library called tubular that um, basically allows uh, cursive to act as a, um, a a client of a socket ripple um, which will make Planck do um, so I'll add that dependency. Um, I think that's good. Um, and then um, I'm going to move this file that gets generated to us a, a closure script file. Um, okay, so now I have a, a basically a closure script uh, project, and um, I'm going to import this project in uh, to cursive. So I'm starting up cursive, and uh, I'll just do the normal uh, import that you would normally do when you're importing a new project. So import project, uh, and let me go. I have it on my desktop. Let's see. Let me refresh, and it's this one here. Okay. That's good. I'll pick 1.8. Um, okay. Let me make this a little bit smaller. And it's indexing things now. Now um, I'm going to actually, in this directory, um, I'm going to run Plonk um, telling it to use this source directory as its um, class path. And I'm also going to give it a, a port to run a socket REPL. Let me pick 7777. So now Plonk is uh, listening there. Um, you could actually use Plonk in this uh, terminal here, but I'm going to actually be driving it through the socket REPL connection from Cursive. Uh, so if I go into Cursive and I say create a new REPL for this project, uh, let's see, create a new REPL for test Plonk. And it's important to pick this closure main one because I'm going to be using um, this tubular library that does read line. Uh, needs to be able to kind of directly access things. So if I create that REPL that way, and let me open up the source for this. Here's the, uh, the source that line again generated. And then let me run the REPL. And this will drop me into a closure REPL. Um, then if I um, Our tubular core, this library that lets me connect to it, and then if I do and give it the port 7777, um, then I'm actually, you can see that the, the uh, prompt has changed to this. I'm going to change this manually to that. Uh, I think uh, Colin has some things that will detect uh, CLJS quit and switch to that, but I need to do that manually there. Uh, and now I'm actually connected to Plonk. Um, Let's see, I'll prove that. Uh, require this namespace, and then maybe um, get the Plonk version. So this is actually um, connected to this terminal here. So if I do, um, if I define a evar in, in that session there, um, if I show it here, you can see they're actually both uh, 
manipulating the same um, environment, if you will. So now, um, this is where it gets kind of cool, is I can actually use cursive. Um, so if I basically use uh, the, the REPL command to move the, uh, I'm sorry, to switch the REPL namespace to this file, um, it'll actually do an NS command and plonk switches to that namespace. And then if I do a um, command to load this file, um, it'll use load file to load that in. Uh, so now that file's there. So if I do foo um, abc, it actually executes that code. Um, if I change this code to something else, uh, let me put like a number two there, save it. Um, then I can tools REPL and um, send this form there, right? Um, and then if I call foo again. So that's cool. That actually um, is the main kind of stuff that you do when you're developing. Uh, so I think this is pretty cool because you know you you really want to be able to edit uh, source code and drive that stuff into Plonk. It's Plonk is is really a REPL and it's kind of hard to edit multi-line things. You know, if you make a mistake several lines up, you want to be able to basically use the the cursive editor to to edit in this rich environment. And then when you're done, when you want to get out, you do CLJS quit. Um, it'll disconnect and drop you back into the closure REPL. Uh, all right, I think that's all I want to demo now. Thanks for watching.